Welcome to the Flute 360 podcast, where we incorporate a panoramic view of flute related topics. I am your host, Heidi K. Begay, and this is episode 122 Tech Equipment for Flute Recordings, Part 1. The Flute 360 podcast and JK Media Productions are teaming up to help you with your student and professional needs. I, Heidi, offer consultation work to both music students and professionals alike. If you are a student who needs help studying for graduate pre and post music exams, editing a research paper, interested in flute lessons, or needs help with job applications, I am here for you. Also, I have been currently working with ministries, music publication companies, and other music professionals to help them with their online projects. Whether you need creative or social media help, I would be thrilled to work with you. My husband, Eric, has been an audio and video engineer for over 10 years and owns the JK Media Productions company. If you are someone who takes or gives music lessons via the web and need help with equipment and or setups, feel free to reach out to Eric. Lastly, he is well skilled with audio and video edits for your next creative project. Please contact us today at HeidiKBegay.com and JKProductions.media so we can get started working towards your professional goals. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to another Flute 360 podcast episode. I'm so glad that you have tuned in and thank you so much for your support. If you are a new listener, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcast app. Thank you so much. So if you've been around, you've been noticing that Eric and I have put together this series, Navigating Your Virtual Flute World. And we put together this series because we are so inspired by you. We've been listening to your concerns and questions now that our world is basically virtual, right? Us as lesson teachers, we're giving online lessons, we are submitting online recordings, and we want to give you the right information in order for you to succeed. So before we get into the tech equipment that you will need for your next flute recording, I want to give a couple shout outs to some new podcast slash musician friends of mine. My first shout out is to Jason Heath, who is the host and creator of the Contrabass Conversations podcast. Also, Garrett Hope with the podcast called Portfolio Composer and Pathways podcast with Adam Wolf. I reached out to these three gentlemen earlier this week and said, hey, for September, let's collaborate. Let's pick each other's brains about this virtual world that we live in of podcasting. So we are all podcasters. We are all musicians. Let's get together and help our audience members. So since, again, our world is changing, we want to get together and talk about how you can develop and put together your own online platform so you're visible and not only visible, but you are creating income, multiple streams of income for you, the entrepreneurial musician. So look forward to that in September. Woo! So Eric, (laughs) welcome to the show. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, this is so fun to do it with my husband, my partner in crime, my best friend, and an expert in the field. Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) So tell the listeners a little bit about yourself so that way they can feel like they know you and they can just totally gel with you. Well, I am a musician too. I am a self-proclaimed blues guitar player. (laughs) You are a blues guitar player. (laughs) (laughs) And I studied music, just like Heidi. We met in 2005, Uh the University of Arizona, in music theory. Yeah. (laughs) Music theory. It was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, 8 a.m. Our TA who ran it was Gloria. We love Gloria. (laughs) Hi, Gloria. Hi, Gloria. (laughs) 
<laughs> if you're listening. And then Tuesday, Thursdays was a lecture hall down at the first floor with Dr. Murphy. I don't know how you remember all this. <laughs> I don't remember. It was too long ago. <laughs> But yeah, that's where my music journey started. That's where I studied music. I studied recording. I actually got my feet wet with recording a whole bunch of flute there. Mm. When I got to know Heidi, her and all her flute friends wanted recordings. So I'd done a lot of competition recordings. I've done a lot of... Like summer festivals. Small ensemble, yeah, small ensemble recordings. And that's where I started to learn how to record. Along with uh, interning in the university recording studio. Yeah, you helped uh, Wiley Ross. Yes, that was such a long time ago. And he's yep. still there. I believe he is. Yeah. Yes. So I had this small Pro Tools rig that I had purchased on a student loan. Yeah. And I was running around with a laptop with microphone cables and microphones setting up all over the university recording flute, recording... Other instruments. All kinds of ensembles mm -hmm. and just experimenting, really. And I wasn't doing it for money, really. I was just doing it for free, maybe even for a burrito here and there. <laughs> and that's that's how I learned. And I turns out I didn't realize I would be recording flute for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I always give Eric such a hard time because he's so into blues and jazz and rock and totally opposite than the classical world that I'm in. And here, you know, all of his recording gigs came from my flute friends and my flute colleagues and my flute professors. You've recorded Dr. Lisa Garner Santa. I mean, it's just amazing to see how this world, you know, just like found Eric. And here he probably, when you started, you started recording your own music that you wrote yes. for voice and guitar. Yes. I bet you had no idea that when you started recording your own compositions, did you ever think that recording classical flute would be in your world? And here you are. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I had big hopes of like recording my own blues album. I was miking my own guitar amplifier, just experimenting with all kinds of setups. And lo and behold, I gravitate towards recording classical musicians. <laughs> Which you love has to taught do. me a lot, though. It has taught me a great deal. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you know, everybody needs a Heidi in his or her life to, you know, totally flip your world upside down and <laughs> give you some new challenges to embark on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. So, yeah, thank you for that background. And it, it really helps to just um, hear your journey and your experience and... We went to pick your brain in order to, uh, we're going to pull out those gold nuggets and give it to you really simple, just X, Y, Z, lay it out so we can package this so neatly for you because again, this is years in the making. There's no point in going out there and trying out this mic, that mic, this whatever, when we've already done that. We've done that like through and through over the years and let's take out the hassle for you and let's just keep it simple, smarty. We're going to kiss it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we are talking about the equipment that you will need for your next flute recording. Now, there are so many different ways you can record flute, right? Flute piano, flute and chamber ensemble, and the list goes on and on. So we're not going to do that. We are just going to focus on solo flute because guess what? Your online flute festivals your online recording submissions for TMEA, NFA, it's going to mostly be for flute solo. So that is the setup for today. Yes. Great. Okay, so stereo microphones is what you are recommending. Can you just tell us what a stereo microphone is? Okay, a stereo microphone is basically two microphones set up in an XY pattern, which is let me just back up a little bit here. An XY pattern is probably one of the more simpler and more popular microphone patterns in a stereo fashion. And there are many out there. There are probably like four others out there, but I won't mention, I'll just mention this one for simplicity's sake. And what it does is it captures a left and right spectrum. Because we have two ears, the way we hear things naturally is from our left and our right ear. And we want to capture a recording that way. So it sounds natural. 
Yeah, no, that's really cool. I love it because us humans, we have two arms, <laughs> two hands, two legs, two feet, two ears, two eyes. And so if you have a microphone that basically captures what is natural already to us, yes, that makes sense. Yep. Try listening to old AM radio. Old AM radio was done in mono, and that is one sound source coming out of both speakers or all your speakers if you are driving in a car. <laughs> but and then when they had stereo, like FM radio, then you would hear the depth in music. You could start to hear, oh, you could hear a little bit of the violin coming out of the right side compared to the left side that had a little bit more of the twangy guitars. Okay. So that is the difference between hearing in mono and hearing in stereo. The stereo gives you the depth of left and right. I love it. I love that word depth. That makes a lot of sense to me. Cool. So you have two top picks for your stereo microphone. What are they? Okay, so the one we are familiar with, and we have this in our own microphone locker, which is the Zoom H1. It is probably one of their first models. And right now they have the H1N, which does the exact same thing. It's just a little bit more updated. But the H1 is in the Zoom line of handy recorders, and there are several out there. But this one particularly has an XY pattern already built into it, XY pattern stereo microphone. And you can slip an SD card in there, which you can remove and plug into your computer to remove recorded files. Nice. Yeah. Trust me. I am not tech savvy. I do not have the silver thumb in the family. It is totally Eric. But when he bought me the H1 Zoom Handy Recorder, he showed me how to do it. And in like two minutes later, I could figure it out. So if I could figure it out, you can figure it out. That uh, small SD card is literally what Eric just said. You just plop it right into your computer and your MP3 files will pop up. Yes. And it does record in MP3 and WAV if you're looking for a higher fidelity audio file. Awesome. Cool. And that microphone right now runs at about $120, so completely budget-friendly. And your second microphone, Eric, is the... It's still in the Zoom handy recorder line. Very simple to use. And it's the H4N. Has a little bit more extra features even has a remote style feature. So you could set your mic up on a microphone stand and hit record with a handy remote. So you don't have to run to the mic, hit record, and run back to your music stand to record your music. That is definitely a nice feature because when Eric is busy and he does not have time to record me, um, I do get a little frustrated with the H1 in the sense that it's far away. I do have to run. I mean, I can literally see myself having to go through this process that Eric just described and hit the record, go back, play the flute, hit stop. I mean, so that remote feature for the H4N sounds really ideal. And these are, like I said, all stereo microphones. So it'll give you the best natural sound for solo flute, a small ensemble, a choir, those kinds of setups. And I do love how handy they are because it literally, when the microphone goes into the case, it fits into the palm of my hand. I mean, it takes up no room at all in my gig bag and it's quite convenient. So I do love that feature. I know I mentioned earlier that, you know, here are two microphones that we recommend. They are budget friendly. Um, if anyone is thinking or worried and thinking, oh my gosh, you're giving me something cheap. No, not at all. We are giving you something that, yes, it is budget friendly, $120, $250. That is budget friendly, but you are not going to get a cheap sound. This is high quality for a very reasonable price. I agree. Cool. So there are other models out there, correct? Yes. So you may have a microphone just sitting in your closet when you bought way back when. If you have a question, you know, like, hey, is this a good microphone? Give us a call. Email us and we can talk you through because there are so many different variables out there, a lot of unique features in, in different microphones. And if you already have something, we could possibly work with what you have. 
why go out and buy something if you have equipment at home? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And yeah, there's always a way to make something that might be fair and turn it into gold. Nice. I love it. So before we get into other options, we should mention that those two Zoom recorders can come with an accessory pack. Can you talk about what that is, Eric? Yeah, the accessory pack, uh, I believe, has a tripod, oh, like a windscreen, I believe the SD card, and USB cable, things like that to attach to your computer so you can exchange files between your computer and even uh, complementary software so you can do a little bit of editing if you had to. Let's say you had to clip the top of the recording that you don't need and then the end of the recording where you don't need and you just get the meat of your audio file. So with that accessory pack, it's about $50 more, but it's really a steal. And with that pack, I believe there's also like a desktop tripod and attachments So why do I need a tripod and why do I need an attachment for a microphone stand? Well, this way you can set it up on a dedicated microphone stand. Let's say you have a a taller microphone stand, which I prefer that somebody would do if they were recording flute. Or if you had that small tripod with the kit, you can set it on top of a music stand, extend the music stand as high as you could go. And kind of lay it flat like a table? Yep. Use it like a tabletop, and then you can record that way as well. Okay, cool. But you need it to sit onto something. Yes, exactly. Okay, very cool. Um, If your budget has more oomph to it, where you can possibly look at higher-end microphones, Eric has chosen two microphones for your budget. Okay. I'm familiar with the Rode brand, and this is just something that I've used since, like what we are talking about earlier in college. I have found Rode to be very reliable and very good quality. And one in particular model that I am familiar with is the M5MP. It's a stereo pair microphone, and they're what we call pencil microphones. So they're not exactly the size of a pencil, but let's say like the size of a roll of pennies. It looks like I like that. It reminds me of like a cigar. Yeah. Exactly. And so they look like a roll of pennies, but the way you would set it up and position it is a cross. Yeah, like an, the XY stereo pattern. And that's how I've always recorded flute. And I think it does a good job for flute and piano. Nice. And that's about $200. Yes. And the big brother on top of that is the Rode NT5 a stereo matching pair as well, which is great for recording flute, violin, piano and in small ensembles. Nice. So I like how you are highlighting the fact that even though, yes, we are talking about recording for flute solo setup, there are other possibilities with these microphones. You are not limited just to a solo flute scenario. Yep. Let's say you were playing in an ensemble. You can even apply this to that particular scenario if you're being accompanied by a piano or other instruments. Yeah, so when our crazy, hazy world of COVID is lifted, we can go back to (laughs) somewhat normal times and play with our friends. Another great microphone is the Audio-Technica AT2022, which is another stereo microphone. And this is actually just a one-piece microphone, but at the very tip of that, where the capsules are, they're put in an XY pattern as well. Okay. Cool. So those three microphones that you just listed, the two Rhodes and the Audio-Technica, you will need an interface for. Yes, you will need a USB Thunderbolt audio interface, one of the two. Okay. And there are so many interfaces out there. Uh, One of the interfaces we use um, is Focusrite. Another one is Roland. So you can't really go wrong. There are so many different bells and whistles with each interface, and we won't go through all the different variables, but just know that you're going to need an interface for those three microphones. And if you have questions about interfaces, again, that's why we're here. Yeah, and just for simplicity's sake, we're using a simple two-channel interface where we can plug two XLR microphone cables into to get both pairs of microphone recorded separately. Okay, cool. 
So earlier you mentioned the microphone stand. What should people know about this piece of equipment? Yes, you want a very sturdy microphone stand. Particularly with microphones like this, you want something that has maybe a tripod leg stand, maybe something with a heavy bass, a heavy duty microphone stand with the right articulation boom and something tall that could reach at least about six, six and a half feet to seven feet where your microphone will be sitting about two feet above your head. I'm glad you mentioned that about the height because that is so crucial. We will talk about the setup of this equipment in episode 123. And if you get a microphone stand that does not have that height and you cannot extend it, you're going to be in trouble with the setup to get the best quality of your recording. Yes. So importantly, a a boom microphone stand. So that boom arm. Yep. With the boom arm. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so that was for an audio recording submission. Now let's go on to the video submission. I know TMEA right now is asking for their students to submit a video recording of the three etudes, you know, per your instrument. So again, we want to keep it simple, smarty, budget friendly, but it does not mean that the quality is low. It's just budget friendly and it's going to give you a really top quality sound and production. So... We have chosen the Shure MV88, and why have we chose that, Eric? It attaches to your iOS device. So if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can turn this into a high-quality audio video system. Nice. So everybody has an iPhone, an Android, some kind of smartphone, or an iPad. So why not use the equipment we already have and just kind of flourish it into a video studio? So that's the budget-friendly part. Our smartphones are already built with amazing video features, and the quality is superb. So let's use that to our advantage. Do not use the internal microphone. It's going to sound tinny and icky, (laughs) for lack of better words. (laughs) I'm very professional, aren't I? But the quality, the visual quality that you get from the cameras is superb. Yes, the video camera on the iPhones record in 720p, 1080p, and even in 4K. And so this was high enough quality for a great visual. But what this attachment does is add the audio to that. So it bypasses the internal microphone. And this particular mic plugs right into the lightning connector. And you can turn this microphone towards the source. And it records in a stereo fashion, a stereo pattern. Okay, so how am I propping up my camera and the microphone? Good question. This particular model also comes with an accessory kit where it comes with a a clip for your phone, just the phone, but not the iPad. You may need like a separate iPad holder for that. You can probably look up on Amazon. There are plenty of those that you can attach to a tripod, like a regular camera tripod. Oh, cool. So this whole package is about $250, again, budget-friendly, and that's the Shure MV88. Yep. Cool. But that's not to weed out if you already have something like a DSLR, a Canon DSLR that you take photos with. That can actually record about 30 minutes of video time, give or take. The downside to this is... The built-in microphone on that camera is not so great. So you may need to record the audio separate and have to edit that together. Okay, so I know this from experience. If you're thinking, if you're a teacher or a student out there and you're like, what the heck is he talking about? I'm going to put it in layman's terms because trust you me, I'm the one who needed it explained to me way back when and now I get it. So what he's talking about is the internal microphone into the camcorder is for speaking purposes, typically. You get a camcorder because you are recording a family birthday party or a swimming party. That's talking. So it's not designed to record the sounds, the acoustics coming from a musical instrument. So he's talking about you have to get an external microphone and any of those microphones that we mentioned earlier will totally fit the bill. And you have to have both running at the same time. 
So then the editing that he's mentioning that's coming in, he's talking about you have to sync up the visual and the audio together so it, so it lines up. So that's where the editing comes into play. Yep. So again, if you don't want to pull out your hair and you want to go this route because you already have a Sony or a Canon camcorder at home already and you want to use this equipment, go for it. But if you don't want to rack your brain and try to figure out how to sync up audio and video, send it over to us. We would love to do that for you. Okay. So just like in episodes 120 and 122, we have emphasized that the setup of this equipment is so important. Again, you can have put in so much money into your equipment, but if you are not properly setting it up, then it's not going to do you any good. So next week is episode 123, and it's the setup of this equipment that we just mentioned. So you can buy all this fancy equipment, but if you are not setting it up correctly, it's not going to do you any good. Awesome. So thank you so much, Eric, for letting us pick your brain. And I hope that this information has helped you, the teacher, the student, with your next recording project. Glad to help. Cool. So to wrap up this episode, we won't take up any more of your time. But um, as a teacher and as a flutist, I totally get how um, practicing for an online festival or a competition is very time consuming. You are practicing the music diligently. <laughs> you are practicing performing in front of friends and family members. And now you are being asked to practice the art of recording. So if this is too much to juggle, use us. We are here for you. We totally get it. And we want to help you produce the best quality work that you have been working so hard towards. So let's put together a nice package for you and deliver it so you feel super confident and you can feel um, satisfied with your work. Awesome. So again, episode 123 is next week. You do not want to miss it because it is the setup of this technical equipment that we laid out for you today. Our picks for today are Mr. Eric J. Begay. I pick Virgil's sugar-free root beer. Any other picks? No, that's it. No. <laughs> My pick for today is dark chocolate. As most of you know, I'm a dark chocolate fanatic. The brand and the flavor that I am picking today is Rakaz Pink Sea Salt. It is so good and I highly recommend it. My second pick for today is Tennis Ball Therapy. YouTube it. There are a ton of videos out there. And my third pick is apple cider vinegar to capture fruit flies. Since we have been eating more veggies, kind of going vegan, you know, these last 100 days, fruit flies have been a thing in our kitchen. And so I just poured some apple cider vinegar into a mug and I put saran wrap over it, poked a couple holes and it, it captures the fruit flies and you don't have them being pesky and whatnot. So apple cider vinegar for those fruit flies. Yay! <laughs> Thank you again, Eric, for your time, talents, and expertise. We so appreciate it. And until next time. Bye-bye. Today's sponsor is brought to you by J&K Productions. Did you know that not only are they a production company for podcasts, but they are a recording company for musicians? Any musical recording needs that you may have J&K Productions can fulfill that need. They have all the necessary equipment and expertise to record your next flute recording for college or graduate auditions, competitions, summer festivals, or a flute album. J&K Productions can record any setup imaginable from solo flute, small chamber, flute and piano, and much more. Consider J&K Productions for your next recording project. Contact them at jkproductions.media. Thank you for listening to the Flute 360 podcast. For more information, please visit HeidiKBegay.com. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review in the iTunes store. Let's talk about flute.